Beyond Hong Kong's bustling streets and behind an unassuming door lies another side of the city. These are tiny cubicles where people are living, crammed in with what possessions they have. Wong Jiwa has been in one for more than 20 years. He's unemployed and relies on government assistance to get by. Wong is just one of the 286,500 applicants for public housing. The Hong Kong Housing Authority already provides homes for more than 2 million people, out of the territory's 7 million. Housing is a complex numbers game, and the city's poorest are paying for it. The financial hub is one of the world's richest regions, but not everyone can get ahead, as there's huge wealth disparity here. The average income of the richest 10% is about 29 times that of the poorest, and that gap is widening. The latest report on poverty shows that 1.34 million people live below the government's official poverty line, the highest figure since 2009. Poverty combined with a lack of housing has also created McRefugees, people who cannot afford to live anywhere, so they sleep in 24-hour McDonald's restaurants. The availability of land, influence of property developers and an ageing workforce are just some of the other challenges which contribute to the chronic shortage of affordable housing. The Territory's chief executive, Leung Chunying, has repeatedly pledged to alleviate poverty and address the housing shortage. His online welcome message says we can build a better home for 7 million people, a more prosperous, progressive and righteous Hong Kong. But for many, that remains a dream kept in cages. Natalie Pohonen, The Newsmakers. Ziu Tian joins me now from Porto. She's an urban planner and the author of the China Urban Development blog. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I mean, this is crazy. Mac, Mac refugees, cage homes. It's un unbelievable to read about this stuff and to watch it, you know, and given that it's happening in Hong Kong, a place that's so rich. I was looking at an article um, criticizing development plans for 61.4 square foot homes. Uh, and when you compare it to jail cells, mm -hmm. the average jail cell is 80.7 square feet. Does that put all of this into perspective that Hong Kong has a massive problem? And even in trying to solve the problem, people are going to be living in, in, in terrible, tight little boxes. Yes, so there is a huge disparity between the rich and the poor, and that's the problem that Hong Kong is facing. How do you solve that? Um, well, so there's... Uh, income disparity is it's hard, it's uh, too big of a topic for me to address, but coming to affordable living, affordable housing, and the government is actually delivering a lot of um, public estates. So there, the housing authority right now manages 177 public estates, and it houses actually a third of the population, over 2 million, the Hong Kong population actually lives in subsidized housing. But at the same time, it is just not enough. So, you know, there's a um, few ways that we can address that, but it's, all of them are going to be very challenging because Hong Kong is very landlocked. But at the same time, you know, it's not, the land is definitely not used to its maximum potential. If you look at it, there's also industrial area in Hong Kong that is mostly vacant or somewhat vacant, vacant but could not be turned into residential land use. Um, so if the government could relax the regulation on how to transform um, certain land use to, you know, house 
low-income families who are housed more residential, um, use, use as residential usage, it will solve part of the problem. And also, at the same time, the government is doing it alone. The government is trying to build more estates, to house more low-income family. But you know, there's a lot more potential if they could bring along private developers, create more public-private cooperation. So in, in terms of you know, giving more tax incentives for um, private developers to build more, to build more that could actually house low-income or even moderate-income families, that would help um, the housing issue. The development minister, Paul Chan Mopo, said, quote, the government does not have a magic wand to create land out of nothing. That seems mm -hmm. to suggest that the government believes that, right. you know, space is an issue. You're saying it's not as much of an issue as, as they claim. But they're saying, hey, supply and demand, we don't have much space. What mm -hmm. are we going to do? We have a tiny country and lots of people. Right. So as I said, I didn't say it's not an issue. It is actually the most important issue here is that there is not enough land. But it is not an excuse to say that we have already used 100% of the land mm -hmm. to its maximum potential. So there is also efficiency that we can really try and figure out in the city where there's existing land that is not being used. Or if there's, it's more important to house families, low-income families, or it is more important to use this land to build office development or commercial development. There is, is a balance that we can try and you know, make this issue a little better. But I'm not saying it's not an issue that, uh, that mm -hmm. Hong Kong as a city is very landlocked. OK, well clarified. Ziu Tian, thanks so much for helping shed some light on mm -hmm. a surprising situation in Hong Kong, which, as we said, is quite a wealthy uh, country. Thanks so much for joining us.